you know, if there's one thing I can say for sure, it's that this series is really beginning to decline. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel and the fourth installment of my Wrong Turn review series. Today we're talking about the fourth film in the franchise, Wrong Turn 4, Bloody Beginnings. I already have a review of the first three movies up and I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description in case you missed any of them. But in the meantime, let me know in the comments what your thoughts on the Wrong Turn movies were if you've seen any of them. And make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these reviews as it helps me out immensely, it helps out the algorithm, helps my channel out, and I would greatly appreciate it. And if you're new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with reviews of new releases, older films, hidden gems, and so much more on a near daily basis. But let's not waste any more time and let's talk about Wrong Turn 4, Bloody Beginnings. This focuses on a group of college students who get lost in a storm during a trip and take shelter in an abandoned sanitarium which, unbeknown to them, is home to three deformed cannibals. This is written and directed by Declan O'Brien, who also directed the third film, and as the title suggests, this serves as a prequel to the original film, showing us the origin of not only Threefinger, who's been in all these movies thus far, but also Sawtooth and One-Eye, who were the other two cannibals in the first movie. And as usual, these are totally new actors playing all of them. So while this film presents itself as if we're going to get this huge amount of backstory to the cannibals, there's really not much to the origin side of things. The film's opening scene takes place in 1974, where we find the three cannibals cannibals, jointly known as the Hilliker brothers, being detained in a medical facility. And we get one big expositional dump explaining where they came from and what led them to this moment before they escape their cells, kill all the staff, and take over the facility. The film then cuts to 2003, which is the same year as the original movie, and it takes place at this same abandoned facility, and it otherwise plays out just like any other slasher movie. And given how the last movie ended, it was pretty clear that making this a prequel was just an excuse to milk this franchise a little further, and the origin story side of things is really Really more of an afterthought. And this to me is now the first official misstep in the franchise. Now, while some saw the third movie as that first misstep, and to be clear, it's definitely a big step down from the first two movies, I found it to be entertaining in a so bad it's good sort of way, and therefore watchable. Though while this is another sequel that I actually didn't hate, it definitely didn't have that same luxury for me as the third movie did. I'd say at times there are some entertaining moments because of its schlocky violence, cheesy special effects, and laughably poor delivery delivery, but it wears out its welcome after a while. After the last movie changed things up a bit by having the cannibals face off against a group made up of mostly tough guy criminals, we go back to the usual setup of having a bunch of young college students get chased around by the three cannibals. And while I've made it clear many times throughout this series that these aren't films that are known for their characters, and that really goes for any slasher movie in general, here though we once again get characters who really tend to get on your nerves after a while, and they aren't anyone we particularly care about. They're depicted as these very stereotypical college students. They have this crass sense of humor, they love to obnoxiously scream and yell to express their excitement, they're very rowdy, and with that they also make a ton of decisions that are nonsensical and just defy logic, usually at the worst possible moments. Now, considering this is a prequel, and it's the villains who are the ones carrying over here, you already know, at least to some degree, to where this is headed. You know it's not going to end with them getting killed off, because it takes place before the first movie, in which all three of those villains are present. So the tension, what little there was to begin with, is deflated a bit, because you know, even if the protagonists have the upper hand on them, you know nothing's going to happen to them in the end. But the thing is, all that being said, with these sort of movies, you should still at least try to make it believable as to why the cannibals couldn't be defeated here. There are several moments in this movie where the ball was clearly in the protagonist's court, and they clearly could have put an end to everything, and they just don't and not for any good reason. And it's clear O'Brien wrote himself in a corner because he obviously can't have the protagonist kill off the cannibals because they need to be alive for the timeline to match up. But the way he writes himself in and out of these situations, it's clear the decisions being made are strictly because the script calls for it, not because it's the logical thing to do. And that gets kind of annoying as we see it happen several times here, where characters will either just walk away or choose not to do the logical thing they should have done to get out of a situation. And what 
doesn't help matters much either is that the acting from most of the cast isn't all that great. You have nine of these college students all going on this trip and it's clear none of them really have any chemistry with one another. The only exception I'd say is a character named Sarah played by Tanika Davis and she was actually pretty solid. But everyone else mostly misses the mark and a lot of their interactions tend to be awkward with the actors reading this very clunky dialogue as well as being in these very bizarre scenarios. Like a recurring thing throughout the first part of the movie is how some of the couples will just casually have sex in an open area or two different couples will have sex in the same room and then other characters will walk in on them and it doesn't seem to bother anyone and they all just start having a pleasant conversation as if there's nothing to see here or some of them will just sit there and watch and the characters having sex will know they're being watched and it's just really weird at times like that. And because of this sort of stuff, I can totally get why people may hate this movie. Because it makes no sense. And it's a lot of the same issues that we ran into with the third movie. But, unlike the third movie, I'd say my patience with some of the bad acting and really poor decision making wore out a lot quicker here. And by the time we got into the third act, I started to get antsy waiting for it to be over. But, as I said, I also didn't hate this movie. Now I didn't like it, don't get me wrong there, but there were a number of times, mainly in the first half, where some of that so bad it's good campiness was there, and it just wasn't as consistent like it was in the other movies. We do get some moments where a character is getting attacked or killed, and there's a lot of hysterical screaming that comes off as cartoonish. Some of these kill sequences can be so ridiculously creative that you have to laugh at them. There's some obviously fake digital blood and really bad makeup on some of the actors. There are moments where we're clearly looking at dummies when it's supposed to be dead bodies on the floor. And whenever we had moments like that, I had a somewhat enjoyable time. And while we see some of it still pop up throughout the entire film, it would immediately get undermined by some really illogical choice being made or some annoying line delivery. And it just caused me to not have that much fun with this. So yeah, this is the first film in the franchise I'd say I flat out disliked. I didn't hate it, but it's certainly nothing I care to revisit. While some of the campy, over-the-top ridiculousness of the other films is present here, it's just not as strong this time around. The film is plagued by things like clunky dialogue, decisions that made no sense, a focus on gratuitous, drawn-out sex scenes that had no purpose, and some really poor acting. And by the time we started to reach the end, I was really looking forward to it to be over. Wrong Turn 4 Bloody Beginnings gets a 5 out of 10. I know after this the sequels don't get much better, if at all, so luckily there are only two more to go here, and next up it's Wrong Turn 5 Bloodlines, so here's the hoping it's not that much worse. But let me know, did you see Wrong Turn 4 or are you planning to see it and what were your thoughts? Did you like this entry at all? Do you have a favorite prequel movie in any franchise? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also if you enjoyed this video please like it and share it and for more movie reviews and film discussion please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone and keep having fun with film. Thank you.